OK, we're going to learn how to play the Pink Floyd classic Time from the album Dark Side of the Moon. We're going to start with the intro, then we're going to look at the rhythm parts for the verses and the choruses and the outro. And, uh, and yeah, we're also going to learn the, the classic guitar solo. Um, I have mentioned before that we're not going to go too into depth with the sounds. Uh, the intro to this song is quite spacey and ambient. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I haven't, I probably haven't got the delay setting right or, or, or anything, but um, it just, I'm just going to show you the notes because it's very sparse. And, you know, when you hear it in context with the, you know, the keyboards and the, uh, and the drums, uh, you know, and the, you know, some of the kind of synth stuff that's going on, um, it's going to sound a lot more kind of uh, ambient and, and effective. But I'm going to play through that first of all, then I'm going to break it down. Very few notes, uh, just a few little fills and uh, a couple of uh, harmonics and stuff going on here and there. So uh, let's have a look at that first of all. So once again, you know, have the original recording by you for reference, you know, um, obviously the song starts with the uh, alarm clocks and, and, and whatnot, but we're going to look at the intro, you know, from when the, when the chords kind of kick in. Um, and I'm going to count through it um, and just, you know, just try and count, as I say, it's very sparse. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, two. And then the drum intro comes in now that's very very sparse you know out of context but let's break it down so all I'm doing I've got um, a delay on there I think there might be a couple of delays um, but you know as I say I'm kind of working um, with with what I've got here I've got a, a clean sound a little bit of compression just for sustain um, a little bit of chorus on there uh, just a mild bit of chorus and the delay set to um, kind of eighth notes um, so Basically, we're going between an open E, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three. So you hold that for one, two, three, four, to F sharp, two, two, three, four. It's kind of four bars if you count in a bar, one, two, like that. Does that again, one, two, three, four. So the F sharp is just the second fret on the low E string. So, you know, you've just got these two notes. Um, so let's just play through that. I'll just count you through that section, first of all. So, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. One. That's just open E. One, two, three, four. F sharp, as I say. Second fret on the low E string. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. E, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. F sharp. Three, four, two, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then it does it again. Then we've got E. This time we've got a little kind of chromatic run up. One, four, one, two. So the second time around, yeah, so we've got E. And then we've got to get to that F sharp. So that's open E, first fret, second fret. Um, so yeah, so we've got a section that goes like this. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. 
One, and it does it again. B, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, with a chromatic run. Two, three, then you've got a fill. So, what that is, it's uh, just based around the F sharp minor pentatonic. Uh, we slide um, from two, on, this is on the A string, so two to four and then two on the D string back to two on the low E you can kind of bend that up slightly so without the delay it just sounds like this so uh, and that kind of feel it sort of serves as your cue the chords change now um, so we've got yeah basically uh, then you fill. Okay, so after that fill, you stay on the F sharp. So I'll just play it, I'll kind of try and count as well. Two, three, four, one, two, three. Then we've got F sharp. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two. And open A. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Then we've got harmonic. So that's um, that's just a harmonic uh, on the twelfth fret on the high E string. So uh, so that A one two three four two two three four back it there. So that's a little fill. So what that is without the delay. We're basically implying, um, well, we're playing G, F sharp, A, but we're bending to that to that uh, G on the low E string. So we bend on the second fret, release it, so it's just second fret on the low E, and then open E. So we've gone to that A, two, three, four, one, two, harmonic, Two, three, four, one, two, three. Two, three, four. Harmonic again. One, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four. Dish, dish, dish. You know, drums come in. Um, that was my impression of, uh, of Nick Mason there. Um, so, uh, we, yeah, we just basically finished with that after that harmonic. Uh, One, two, three, four, one, two. Then that run up that we've had before. And we just hold that. Two, three, four, and then drum fill, and then we're in with the verse. Okay, so we're going to look at the verse section now. This is when the uh, the drums kick in and uh, and the vocals start. Now, um, I'm using basically I'm using the the bridge pickup. Um, very mildly overdriven sound, you know, a little bit kind of crunchy, um, you know, the kind of break up on the amp. Um, but it's worth pointing out with this song, you know, the rhythm guitar part, um, it's not really a prominent part of the song, you know, you've kind of got the got the keyboards going on and, and, and you know, so don't get too bogged down trying to kind of capture every single nuance and every little feel. You know, you can put a bit of yourself into this and, you know, have a bit of artistic license with this because um, it, it's it's one of these uh, rhythm parts where David Gilmour wasn't playing exactly the same thing, uh, you know, the, the same way twice. Um, but it's based around the chords, F sharp minor, A, E and then F sharp minor. It's just based around those those three chords. So there are a few little fills here and there. I'm just going to play, you know, an approximation of the verse. Um, three and four and. Um, it pretty much the second verse 
is almost the same. There's another little fill in the second verse where it'll go. Um, but you've got this fill which occurs in both verses. Um, so, you know, you just want to get a kind of funky, choppy rhythm going. I'm playing this... This uh, F-sharp minor um, chord, which is, you know, kind of like the top part. I'm basically barring the top three strings on the second fret, um, and then my third finger's coming over and playing the fourth fret on the fourth string. Um, occasionally just kind of playing that, that lone F-sharp note on the, on the low E string on the second fret. Occasionally you might hear, you know, which is just like a hammer on from the open E. Um, and then when it gets to the A, that definitely happens in the, in the first verse. Where we hit an A sus4. Um, so if you, know, if you know this A where you just bar the top four strings um, with your first finger and just make sure that you don't play that top string. Um, it just got this sus4, which is uh, on the third fret of the B string. And then back to that A. So we've got... You'll hear that occasionally, just an open E. And then an E followed by an E chord. And then you've got this, uh, it goes back to the F sharp minor. So E. So this fill, uh, just space around the F sharp minor pentatonic, we bend up a whole step on the fourth fret on the G string. G string, not sting. And then it's four, pull off to two on the on the G. And then two on the G. And then you hit two on the D string twice. So uh, half of that verse. So you've Again, F sharp minor. Now that, there's this fill, um, just kind of using sixths. If you've done the lesson on sixths, um, then uh, you'll be familiar with these shapes. If not, just I'll break them down. Um, you can play it down here. So it's exactly the same thing, just a slightly, because it's on uh, thinner strings, it's just a slightly kind of lighter sound. Um, so I'll show you it here. It's uh, second finger on the eleventh fret on the D string, first finger on the tenth fret on the B string, and really you want to mute out the strings in between. So you know, use the fleshy part of your second finger to mute out the G string. Use the fleshy part of your first finger to mute out the uh, high E string, and just try not to hit the low two strings. So it's this figure. You know, you're just playing two notes. And then, so, and this shape is um, second finger on the 12th fret on the uh, D string and uh, third finger on the 12th fret on the B string. So, and again, just mute out all the other unwanted strings. And then we go, so we basically hit it, slide it up two frets and then back down, same shape. So you're sliding it up to 14 on the D, 14 on the B. And then, so uh, just play that figure, and basically, um, so we've got. And then E. That's it, F sharp. Minor. So before we go into the section, it goes. Tired of lying in the sunshine, staying home to watch the rain. I don't know if you want to call that the bridge or the chorus. Um, before we go into that section, we're going to just jump ahead. So we're just imagining that. Well, obviously, we're going to look at that section. We're going to look at the solo. Um, but let's just imagine we're in the 
last verse, just after the guitar solo. Um, pretty much the same as the verse we just learned. <laughs> Just that feel. Um, so I just wanted to show you that feel. So. so when it goes to the A, we go, so basically the start of the verse. Go to A. So again, we're just using those sixth shape, and we're just kind of outlining this A chord. So, so we kind of slide up, and we've got this figure where we've got the two fingers on the same fret. In this case, it's um, the uh, second finger on the seventh fret of the D, and the third finger on the seventh fret of the of the uh, B string. And we're again just muting out all the unwanted strings. And we slide up and then two frets lower so fifth fret and then we've got this shape that we looked at up here same shape so that's um third finger uh, on the third fret of the b string and second finger on the fourth fret of the d string and then you know going down to what is essentially an a7 uh, a dominant seven shape, but we, again, we're just muting out the unwanted string, so we just want to hear this E note and this C sharp. So that's basically um, second finger on the um, second fret of the D string and third finger on the second fret of the B string. So, so it's just you know that that you do hear that that feel quite um, prominently. So. Then this fill, this one, that happens again. It's just another fill that's very similar to that. E, F sharp minor. So that's the verse sections covered. So we're going to skip back now to um, the, the, the section just before the guitar solo. I don't know whether you call this a chorus or the bridge or just, you know, generally a, a kind of B section. Um, <clears throat> but it's a section that goes, uh, Tired of lying in the sunshine, staying home to watch the rain. So, you know, you'd be familiar with that. And the guitar is very kind of sparse. Um, I'll just play, basically, um, it's based around D major 7 to A major 7, but I think the guitar might just be playing a straight D and an A. I like to play the major 7s. Um, so I'll just play play through it basically. So you've got D major 7, 2, 3, A major 7, three. D major 7 again, A major 7, D major 7, C sharp minor, B minor, and then we're kind of into the guitar solo from there. So uh, basically, yeah, D major 7, and I'm just kind of just, you know, using the pick and the fingers just to pick, uh, you know, percussively kind of, you hear that occasionally, just, you know, pick the chords out. Um, Seven, or you can just play D, you know, and then we've got the C sharp minor, B minor, and then we've got this fill. We had a similar thing on the intro where we're going G, F sharp, E, um, but we're bending to the G on the low E string. So bend, release, open. And that's basically just to, you know, coming before the uh, landing on the uh, E chord. Um, and then we're going to look, uh, we'll look at the guitar solo in, in a bit. Um, but you've got that kind of pick scrape that you'll hear into the guitar solo. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so that was the solo for time. Very, very popular solo. Um, again, you know, with all of these lessons, please have the original close by so you can cross-reference and, you know, kind of get the phrasing right and everything because um, that's prob it's probably going to sound a bit weird unaccompanied and out of context like that. Uh, but hopefully you got the gist of it. Um, Again, I'm not going to go too much into detail with the actual sound itself because it's not really the sound I was going for. It's not the sound I, I get out of my rig. Um, quite limited here today in terms of the uh, equipment that we've got on the floor here. But um, I've basically got quite a, quite a saturated, distorted sound. Um, you know, quite sort of fuzzy. Uh, I'm just using the distortion on this unit here um, and, a, and a whole reverb and uh, a tape delay basically um, but yeah so the solo is based around the uh, F sharp minor pentatonic scale play that with the delay off obviously there are some other positions involved as well um, and there are also, uh, th th there's a couple of arpeggiated ideas which are very kind of melodic sounding. Um, so uh, hopefully you should know your minor pentatonic box shape if you're going to attempt to learn this solo. Um, I'm going to play it slowly and then I'm going to break it down for you. So hopefully that made sense, played uh, a little bit slower there, um, although it was kind of hard to you know, keep at a regular tempo with that delay. Um, I'm going to take the delay off now and, and show you uh, the first phrase. So basically it, um, it kind of comes in you know, uh, after the, the first kind of chorus part and um, you hear it coming with a pick scrape. Uh, you want to make sure, you're on your neck pickup, uh, sorry, bridge pickup for this. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not doing it from behind the pickup. Um, just kind of over the pickup, and then we kind of land. Sometimes I kind of scrape into it because I have to, I have to turn the pick around. We land on this F sharp note on the full fret, on the full string. So the first phrase will be this. So giving it some vib, that first note, and then we bend on the full fret on the uh, third string. Bend up a whole tone and then down a semitone. I don't know if that was what David Gilmore was attempting. He might have been kind of not thinking too much about the actual pitch. But it's a nice kind of, you know, it creates a nice tension there. Um, so you, can, you kind of bend up a whole step, down, half a step and back up 
whole step there. Two, three. And then we've got. So that's again bend up whole step on the fourth fret on the fifth on the third string. So bend, release, pull off to two, and then that's uh, bend four. It's all on the third string. Bend four up a whole step, and then two, hammer on to four. Uh, this bend is quite hard actually if you've got quite thick strings like I've got. But what I'm doing there, you back to the fourth string on the fourth fret and you bend up half a step. So you bend down actually. Well, it's up to you, but I, I tend to bend down. And then release. So putting that phrase together. Two, three. And then we've got basically moving up to the next position of the uh, F sharp minor pentatonic. So we go six, uh, six on the on the G string, five on the B, and then that's uh, on the B string. Um, seven, pull off to five, hammer on to seven. Oh, actually, not hammer on, pick that note. So it's Pick, pull off, pick. And then, it's kind of a blues bend, that's five on the high E. You know, it's kind of tease it up a little bit. Followed by seven on the uh, B string, so. So, then we go back to. So similar to the first phrase we had, so we've got that F sharp note on the full fret on the full string, and then that's bend up a whole step on the full fret on the third string, Put release, pull off to two, bend up again. So then we've got, then we kind of, we kind of move up the neck. So. So we've got this uh, kind of sixth here, this, uh, you know, you hear a lot of these kind of double stop ideas. Um, what, what that is, we uh, basically slide up to the ninth fret on the G string with the second finger, and you want to catch the ninth fret on the high E string with the third finger. And then we bend up half a step on the ninth fret, and re uh, so bend up half a step and release it. And then that's bend 10 on the B string. So bend, release it, and then 10 on the B, 9 on the B. So. And then that's the end of that phrase. So we've got. What I'm doing there, bending ninth fret on the B string up half a step, releasing it, and then that's nine on the G, bend it up whole step, and then pick it again. And then it kind of comes down like that, there's a lot of tension there uh, before it goes into the next phrase. So just putting that whole second phrase together. Like that. So when you get to that bend at the end, um, you're releasing it slowly, but you want to give it some vibrato when it actually gets to pitch. So, give it some vibrato and then let it down like that. So let's just put together everything we've got so far, for, so far, so far, so far for the first half. So, two, three.
OK, so the next phrase... So we're moving up the neck, um, we're moving up to what some people would call position one, again, of the uh, F-sharp minor pentatonic scale, um, albeit an octave higher than where we started from. Um, but we're playing this phrase... This kind of starts, we're kind of outlining um, uh, an F-sharp minor seven arpeggio, I suppose. So um, we're going 16 on the G string, 14 G, sorry, 16 on the D string, sorry, 14 uh, G, 14 B, so, and you can just bar those, uh, the, the G and B strings with your first finger. And then we're bending 17 on the B string upper whole step. And then we're doing one of these compound bends. Um, very bluesy idea. So we're catching with a full finger. We're catching the um, 17th fret on the high E string. And then bending that B string again. So, And then we're kind of going into the next position. We can do it there, but it, well, it, it, to me it sounds like a hammer-on. So it's uh, 17 on the, on the B, this is all on the B string. Um, so it's 17, hammer-on to 19, and then 17 again. And then back into the position we were in before. And we're bending 16 on the, on the G. So putting that together. Next phrase. So um, there's a lot of bend in here. So uh, and then so we're actually bending the 16th fret on the G string up a tone and a half. So and then so bending it up a, a, a tone and a half, so three frets worth, releasing it and then bending it again up just a whole step. So. So we're going, we're going for those two notes. And then picking it again. So picking it, so. And then picking up, picking it and bending it. Picking it up, bending it up a whole step. Release. And then picking it twice. So we've got. One more time. And then another compound bend. That's a very bluesy thing. So with a full finger, we're catching the uh, 17th fret on the B. Pick that twice. Bluesy lick there. That's uh, bend up a whole step on the 16th fret on the on the third string. Release. 14. Bend that slightly sharp. And then 16 on the D string. So, just putting all that together, so we've got... So we want to start with, so again we're back in this position of the box shape of the minor pentatonic. Um, so that's 14 on the B, bar, if you bar the, um, the first finger across the top two strings on the 14th fret just so you're in position, so we go 14B and then bend 17B uh, up whole step and then take it down. You actually, he actually bends a little bit sharp, um, which sounds great. And then we bend 17 on the B string up the whole step. So we've got... 
and uh, you know, give that some vibrato once you're up there. Next phrase. So we got. Again, another bluesy idea, so it's um, 17 on the B. So, it's so you're bending 16 on the G string up. It's kind of a half a step, but it can, you can do a whole step. It's just that sort of bluesy, ambiguous thing. It's kind of, I guess it's a half step. But you're just kind of releasing it as soon as you bend it. So bend, release, pull off to 14, and then uh, 16, 14 on the G, and then bend 16 up a whole step again. And then we've got this phrase here. Now, to my ears, on the recording, it does sound that he, he's bending this high note quite sharp, and there's a lot of um, ambiguity. Some people think that you bend into this note here, um, this C sharp here. Some people might think that he's actually bending to uh, a, a D, so it's kind of somewhere in between. Um, I used to bend all the way up to a D, you know, to my ears, it's kind of somewhere in between, so it's, it creates a nice tension anyway. Um, so what we're doing here, uh, we're, uh, it's 17B, bend up a whole step or a tone and a half, somewhere in between, um, on the 19th fret on the high E string. So you go, bend, and then bend it again release and then pick it twice and then we've got this nice little arpeggio idea this is kind of outlining uh, an E major um, triad so that's um, that is a 16 on the high E 17 B 16 G and then back to 17 B slide up to 19B and pick again. And then we finish the lick off it with... So that's... Um, 17 on the B. And then pick again, 17. Hammer to 19. Pull off again to 17. And then to um, 18 on the G-string. So the whole section... Right, so the good news for this next section is you can give your fingers a rest from all that bending. Um, lovely arpeggiated line. So what we're doing... Um, so, um, starting on the full fret of the D string. So two on the G, and then we we'll slide it up to uh, seven on the G, and then seven on the B, and then it's a lot of shifting around. Um, that's third finger up to twelve. Uh, sorry, up to ten on the B. Slide to twelve. So, and then with the first finger, ten on the B string. So.
and that is nine, it's all on the B string, hammer to ten, so, and back to nine, so, slide down to five and re-pick it. So, and then we've got, So it's um, that's it. So I <laughs> never slowed this down before. So it's uh, seven, all on the B string. So seven, slide up to uh, nine and repick it. That's uh, that's uh, seven, five, slide back up to seven again. And then that's um, a lot of shifting around. That's five, two, five, two on the B string. But you kind of pick, it's five, slide, and then pick, and then pick. So you're kind of picking, so it's pick, and don't pick, pick, and pick. So, um, Actually, by the time I get there, it doesn't really matter what finger you use. I'm actually using my second finger. Um, but just use whichever finger you're comfortable with. Uh, and then we go into this. Again, big bends. Um, so we're bending up a whole step on the... Uh, Full fret on the G string, taking it down, pulling off to two, and then bending up again, but bending up a tone and a half. So, so we're bending up to this uh, D note, and then taking it down, bend up a whole step, pull off to two, bend up a whole step again. So. And then, so that's uh, just uh, two, four, two, all on the G string, so. And then we've got, so that's uh, uh, kind of, so we go uh, from the from the uh, D string um, on the full fret. We slide immediately up to six, and then four on the, on the G, and then back down to six on the D. Six um, sliding immediately to four. So. Followed by two on the D string. So. And then open low E, and then F sharp on the second fret on the low E string. That kind of uh, lands on the uh, F sharp minor chord that starts the uh, the last verse. So, um, You want to give that uh, open E some whammy bar, whammy bar, whammy bar vibrato if you've got a whammy bar. Same with the last note. And in fact, I think David Gilmour probably uses uh, a lot more um, tremolo arm vibrato throughout that solo um, than I do. I tend to use uh, more kind of finger vibrato. But I think you know, perhaps the first F sharp of the solo. because he does a lot of that he was doing more of that um kind of tremolo arm vibrato um round about the wall era but um but you know i mean it's it's a it's a big feature in in, in his playing but uh you know that's uh, that's pretty much the solo i'm just going to play that last um section again in, in its entirety <laughs>
Okay, so we've kind of skipped ahead. We've been moving around the song a little bit. Um, we've kind of looked at the last verse with the... Um, yeah, there's a little feel that kind of it's kind of something like this. I forgot to to show you. Um, again, you know, you don't have to copy these fills exactly, but it's just these sixth ideas. Uh, it's kind of playing something like that. So you know, if you know these sixth shapes, you can kind of figure that out. And then E and to F sharp minor. And then we've got that every year is getting shorter. So, you know, again, it's just D major 7 to A major 7, or just, you know, just kind of power chords D to A. Again, guitar very sparse. Hanging on in quiet. C sharp minor. So it's the same as the first B minor. But instead of going to E now, we've got this change. Before we go into the, you know, whole breathe section, um, all that is, well, all that is, it's uh, we're kind of playing some altered chords here, um, and it's a, it's a Rick Wright favourite change actually. What we're doing, we're essentially we're going from B7 sharp nine to B7 flat nine, but there's also this F in there, um, which I guess is a flat five. Um, but don't get too bogged down with a the theory. Uh, So this F, um, sorry, this B7 sharp nine, um, a B7 with a sharp nine. You know, a lot of lot of people call it the Hendrix chord. Um, you might know it up here in E. So I'll just walk you through that. It's uh, second finger on the second fret on the A string, first finger on the first fret of the D string, third finger on the second fret of the G string, fourth finger on the third fret of the B string. Um, and what we're essentially doing, we're kind of keeping this shape, but we want to, that's a sharp nine. We want to kind of get this C note in there, um, but we're going to have to change the fingering. Um, also, there's this, there's this F note in there. So basically, um, we kind of have to do a little bit of repositioning. Um, so, what, I mean, how I finger this, uh, you can just play like the top part of an F chord um, and let the bass, you know, kind of take care of the, of the bass note and the keyboard. So, you know, you can just go from this B7 sharp 9 to just a kind of F triad there, you know, with your first finger on the, um, barring the top two strings of the, the first fret, and with your uh, second finger on the second fret of the third string. Um, so there's a few ways to kind of, you know, uh, finger this. So what I do, the most comfortable way to kind of get this whole chord in is what I'm actually doing is um, I'm barring the top four strings at the first fret with my first finger and then second finger on the second fret of the A string, third finger on the second fret of the G string. So, going from, uh, yeah, let's go from two, three, that's D, C sharp minor, B minor, then I'll show you that section right now. That's the kind of when it goes into the breathe section, and you know, you've got a, a tempo change there. Okay, the next section, as I mentioned, is based around um, the chords for breathe, um, and it's your home, home again section. Um, I'll just put a phaser on there. Um, it's uh, it's not the exact setting that I was looking for, but you know, as I say, we're not really interested at the po in this point of going too in depth with the sounds. Um, so I'll just play um, again. You know, you don't need to. You can uh, you, you know you can afford to have a little bit of artistic license with this, but I'll just play what I normally play. So yeah, we're just coming out of the three down. Thank you. 
So um, it's placed around E minor to A, um, but you know you can you can play a, a straight E minor chord, um, but this E minor nine definitely features. Maybe not every time, but it's you know it's really nice sounding chord. So basically, first finger on the second fret of the A string, fourth finger on the fifth, sorry, fourth fret of the D string. And the rest of the strings are open. And you kind of just, you know, lazily kind of dragging the pick across backwards, you know, it's got that swing to it. So, and then just going to A, so two, three, so you can just do that if you want. But there's a few little fills. Again, just messing around with these uh, these sixths. So you should know that shape. And again. Oh. Yeah, when it goes. Uh, after he says home, there's a kind of like a power chord, an E power chord. And a few little sus. So it's just E, e minor to A. And then there's a little fill that goes. Or I just basically just play it on the G and B string. So all that is is uh, 15th fret on the B string, uh, 14th fret on the G string, and then 14 B, 14 G. So and then 12 B, 12 G. There's a little figure, um, which is just before the uh, far away across the field section. So that's just uh, you know kind of just playing around with an A sus. I'm just going three on the B, two on the B, and then two on the G string. So once again. Yeah, that feel, upon listening to it just now, um, the first time it goes into that section, it's actually that rhythm I was going, um, I can't remember what I was doing, but, you know, it's quite loose, and, you know, there's even the open G in it, so don't worry, don't get too bogged down with these feels. Okay, so the final section, which will be the um, far away across the fields. Um, so basically, I'll just play it first. Two, three. So what that is, um, you, you've got. G major seven, uh, sorry, C major seven uh, over G. So C major seven with a G in the bass. I'll show you that chord in a sec. B minor, F major seven, G seven, D seven sharp nine to E flat diminished. I actually didn't play the the root note. Um, 
before, and then resolving on B minor. Now, um, so that's basically uh, this uh, C major seven over G is basically like uh, base, uh, what I'm doing here. Second finger on the second fret on the G string, fourth finger on the G root note on the third fret on the low E string, fourth finger on the third fret of the A string, and the rest are open. And you're kind of doing these little kind of snatches in between, and then B minor, two, three, four, F major seven. Um, you can play the root with your thumb actually. I tend just to, I tend to kind of do what would be a, a second inversion, you know, I've actually got the uh, the C on the root, but um, G7, which you should know, G dominant seven, and then D7 sharp nine, so it's basically the same chord as we had down here when we had B7 sharp nine, same shape, should I say, so you move it up to the, instead of with the, the root being on the second fret, it's on the fifth fret. Um, and then you've got a, this turnaround is almost. Some people think it's the same thing. So it's, some some people think that this chord progression is going from D7 sharp nine to D7 flat nine. But um, you've actually got an E flat in the bass. So it's actually D7 sharp nine to E flat diminished. Um, you can just play as I did in the run through the top part of that chord. You don't need to play the root note. Um, the bass will take care of that. But I'll just show you it. So D7 sharp nine. It's E diminished, e, so E flat diminished, should I say? Um, second finger on the full, uh, full fret of the second string. Uh, first finger on the full fret of the fourth string. Third finger on the fifth fret of the third string. Fourth finger on the sixth fret of the fifth string, A string. So, and then just resolve. On a B minor, you play it there or there. I tend to, I quite like this shape with the thumb in the root, and just, you know, just kind of drag the pick across it. And uh, that concludes time. Great song. So enjoy that and have fun.